What's up, YouTube? It's been a while. Uh, it's your boy Andrew, back with another poker vlog, voting poker vlog number. I lost track seven. Um, yeah, it's been a while. Um, I hope you guys have not been too upset with me for not uploading. I've just been busy. I've been dealing to make some extra money on the side and playing. And I realized when I was recording a few weeks ago, I wasn't fully focused and immersed into my own gameplay, and I was making mistakes that I normally should have because I was recording. So um, hopefully I'm gonna start it back up today. I'm gonna try to get a session in, record, play my A game and get a good vlog for you guys out. And uh, yeah, so I'm one three matches stack like always. Um, we might buy in deep today. So we might buy into 1,500, 2,000 just so we, we can have a lot more maneuvering room than usual and cover everyone on the table. But yeah, let's get into it. Uh, I'll see you guys inside. Let's get it. So new tables form when I get there and I buy for the max of $1,000. I also buy $100 tip chips just to help the dealers out. We're not supposed to be taking chips in play off the table to tip dealers. So if a player throws a blue or red bird to the dealer, I'll switch it out with the white chips just to help the dealer out and prevent them from getting in trouble as well as the club. All right, so let's get started with the first hand here. We are in the small blind with seven, eight off suit. The button makes it $12. I defend in the small blind and the big blind also calls. So we go three ways to a flop. Comes pretty good for us, ace, six, nine. We flop open-ended. I check it, the big one checks it, and the button bets $20 into 36. This is a really good check raise spot. If he doesn't have the ace, he's gonna fold and we can take out the dead money. So I check raise to $60 and both the big blind and the button fold. Easy money for our first hand. In this next hand, we have queen 10 off in the small blind, the plus one and plus two limp. We make it 16 out of position with a decently strong hand. The big blind plus one and plus two call, so we go four ways to flop, which comes ace, 10, seven, two hearts, and a diamond. We continue hitting the middle pair for $40, and the big blind calls and the rest fold. Turn comes an eight of diamonds, so I wanna slow down here in case he has an ace and let him do the betting. So I check it to him, he bets 65, and I think we have a easy call here. Um, I think we can fold here some of the times, but it's a blind on blind, um, spot where i think we can also hit you know our queen 10 outs um and he could just be bluffing with some hard draw or diamond draw so i do call and the river comes a five of diamonds bringing backdoor diamonds in i check to him and he ends up checking him back and shows ace jack off so we decide to table change because our previous table wasn't giving us as much action as we wanted in this next hand we are in the small blind at our new table with five six of hearts the plus two limps the button limps the Small blind, which is me, limps, and the big blind checks it. Flop comes ace, deuce, five. I bet $10 hitting middle pair, and all three other players call. The turn comes a deuce. I'm going to bet pot, which would be $52. And I bet 52 into 52 with five deuce on the board at 52 social poker. And this actually works out, and the big blind said he folded a weak ace. So we get the perfect outcome with our perfect size bet. So in this next hand, we have ace deuce of hearts on the big blind. The button makes it $20. We're gonna defend our big blind here with the nut flush of hearts. Um, so we call the $20 and go heads up. The flop comes ace, queen, seven. So we're gonna check here to pot control. We can check call every thing that he bets unless it's some crazy overbet or something. So we do check and he ends up checking it back, which leads me to believe that the ace is good here. Um, even if he had a queen, he would try to bet it. The turn brings us the eight of spades, bringing in spade flush draw. We lead here to protect our hand and our ace. So we bet $40 into the pot and he ends up calling. The river brings a nine of clubs, which, sh which shouldn't change much. So when I check to him and he bet $60, we have an easy snap call here. He ends up mucking his hand and I showed the deuce of hearts and he's like, oh, what did you have? I'm like, if you're gonna muck it, I don't have to show it and I can do that every time. You better show your hand. I would love them to show their hand so I can get the information and doing this just tilts the player. Um, hopefully I can get him to make more mistakes in the future and that's the point of doing these mind game plays. All right, so in this next hand, this is where we start to run hot, no spoilers, um, but we are in the button with ace three of clubs. The plus two makes it $15. The hijack and myself call. Flop comes nine, six, nine, spade, diamond, club. 
the plus two checks it the hijack makes it fifteen dollars we call and the plus two calls with our overcard and backdoor clubs the turn comes perfect which is the queen of clubs giving us uh, flush draw equity the plus two makes it 35 into 94 and the hijack calls for this price we're not going anywhere to drawing to the nut flush I think one of them has a nine and another one probably has a draw as well maybe a straight or a flush draw so we call and the river hits gin for us ten of clubs the plus two bets fifty dollars and the hijack goes all in for fifty six dollars I think we have an easy raise here um, the plus two only has probably around 400 500 so he jams it's an easy snap for us um, I'm trying to target all nine X's that obviously aren't boats or weaker full flushes um, so right here we bet $200 into what he has about 400 left um, this is a 300 into about $300 bet and the plus two tanks for a really long time up to the point where I have to call clock he ends up tank folding and saying he folded a nine and the other person had jack six of clubs. Clock. Floor, clock, DJ, floor, clock, table 15. In this next hand, we're in the cutoff with Big Slick, offsuit, Ace King, offsuit, under the gun, plus one, and hijack limp. We're not going to let them in for that cheap. We make it 25. The big blind and under the gun call, and the under the gun plus one and hijack fold. So we go three ways to flop, which comes Ace, Deuce, Queen, two hearts, and a diamond. The big blind and under the gun check to us. This is an easy continuation bet. So we size up to about three quarters of the pot. So we bet 60 into 82, and both fold. In the case that they call, we can just shut down and reevaluate on the turn if we draw any equity. Um, other than that, we would just check shut down after that. Um, but I like to see bet and just try to take down the flops when it should hit our range more often than not. So in this next hand, we are under the gun plus one. The under the gun straddle is on. So we open with ace 10 off to $16 and only the button calls us. So we go to the flop heads up to 10, jack four. We hit middle pair and the other guy is pretty short so we bet $20 hoping to just take it down. Um, the button actually goes all in for $64 so only $44 more to call. Um, I think when we bet $20 and into the pot of $30 to $30, like $40, um, we have an easy call here. If he has his beat, he has his beat. So we end up calling. The turn comes in ace so we turn aces up and the river is some non-factor card but he ends up showing pocket jacks for the flop top set so we lose that one but in this next hand we're up against him again and hopefully we can get that money back in this immediate hand after we're under the gun with ace jack of hearts we open for twenty dollars the cutoff calls and the small blind big blind fold so we're heads up against the same player again flop comes ace ten four spade heart spade we continue betting twenty dollars into forty four and he calls us Turn comes seven of hearts, so not only do we have top pair strong kicker, we now have the nut flush draw. So we're going to bet half pot again, $40 into 84 and he's a non-believer, so he ends up calling us. The river brings the ace of clubs, which is a pretty decent card too, if he has that last ace. So we put them all in, and he snap calls, showing one ace, and our ace jack, sorry, is much better than your ace. So we stack him and get our money back. Alright, when I told you I was running hot, I mean I'm running hot. This immediate next hand, I'm in the big blind with pocket kings. The cutoff and small blind limpet, we're going to make it $13, make it a small price for them. Both the cutoff and small blind call. So we go three ways to a flop, which comes jack, nine, five, two spades, and a heart. I want to target all jack x holdings now, and non-believers, because I've been showing bluffs. So we bet $20 into the 39, the cutoff folds, and the small blind calls. Turn comes to 8 of hearts, so now there's a spade flush draw and a heart flush draw, as well as straight draws on the board. The cutoff actually leads into us for $45, and 
And I think we have an easy call here. We don't want to bloat the pot or get pushed off our hand. So we call the 45 into the 79. The river comes a queen of spades. So any 10 makes a straight and the flush draw front door gets there. The cutoff checks to us. So this signifies weakness in my opinion. Um, I'm still going to try to target any Jack X or Queen X holding that is a non-believer. So I bet a blocker bet of 50 into 169. In hindsight, this might not be the best bet because we have showdown value and if we get raised when we're in a terrible spot. But it is what it is and we bet 50 into 169. The cutoff doesn't believe us and he ends up calling. I show the Kings and it's good. So I'm pretty sure he had some Jack X holding that just didn't believe us. Um, the board was so wet that it could have been looked like look like we were trying to bluff with um, some type of 10x straight draw. Um, so it works out in the end, but in hindsight, I'm not sure I like my bet too much when we already have enough showdown value with Pocket King. In this next hand, we are under the gun plus one with Big Slick suited, Ace King of Spades. We are going to pop it up to $20. The hijack and cutoff both call the small blind and big blind fold, so you go three ways to a flop which comes pretty favorable for us. It's queen four five with two spades and a heart. We're gonna see bet here with our nut flush draw and two over cards, $35 and 64. The hijack calls and the cutoff, weirdly enough, actually raises to 125. I'm thinking as a two pair or a set here or maybe just top pair with a really good kicker. Um, so we have a lot of outs in my opinion. So I call the extra 90 with a lot of implied odds. The cutoff tanks and ends up calling. So we have really good price if we hit our flush draw. If not, we can slow down and check, uh, reevaluate the turn. We don't have to though, because the turn comes nine of spades and we turn the nuts. At this point, because the pot's so big, it's, um, what is it, 375 plus 64, four, around 420. Um, I'm gonna bet 300 into 420, about three fourths pot. Because if they have a set and he raised that flop, he would be jamming probably regardless or at least tanking and thinking about it. Um, if he has two pair, he'll probably be thinking about it. And I'm not sure if he would be calling with top pair strong kicker, but we want to try to maximize our value on this turn and then get it all in on the river. Um, if we get it all in now, it'd be perfect, but they both snap fold. So I'm really confused at what either of them might have had. Um, one of them might have had a straight draw and the other one might have just had a pair, but it's really weird when he raises 125 into two players on the flop and then just snap folds it at any single bet. So not sure what happened there, but I'm happy to take down the pot. In this immediate next hand, after our big slick suited, we wake up with a bit of a downgrade, but still a good hand, ace queen of hearts in the big blind. The under the gun, the under the gun plus one, the button and the small blind all limp. I'm not gonna let them see a flop that cheap with a premium. So I pop it up to $23. Under the gun folds, plus one button and small blind all call. So we go four ways to a flop, which comes six of clubs, nine of hearts, eight of spades. I do this funny thing where I like to pot it as if I'm playing PLO. I call pot and bet $95 into the $95 pot. Um, there shouldn't be too many pocket pairs in these people's ranges, if anything, they might have overcards to the board. Um, so there shouldn't be too much resistance here. Um, even with draws, they shouldn't be calling here. So I bet 95 into the 95 pot. The plus one and the button fold, the small blind actually ends up tank calling. So I'm worried he has either some type of straight here or he has a set or a two pair. Um, more likely some nine, eight, two pair or some straight draw. So the turn brings the two of hearts. Um, when he checks to me, I can consider barreling here again with a lot more equity drawing to the nut flush, but he only has 200 behind. If I bet say 75 to 125 and he jams, it's just a really shitty situation to where I have to call off and just gamble and try to hit my flush draw. So I'd rather check and see a river. So I check it back to him and the river comes to Jin, which is the five of hearts. So we hit the nut flush. He checks it to us and we only have one move, which is jamming his $200 um, effective into the $285 pot. He just says that he missed his open-ended straight draw and folds. Um, so he had 10 jack, I think it was 10 jack offsuit. I don't know why he's calling a pot size bet on the flop open-ended. Um, yeah, that's just not what you're supposed to do. And that's the reason I bet pot into that. It's because that I'm not giving him the price to draw there. 
that he should be folding, but I'm happy to take down the $95 extra that he gave me. So um, it is what it is, and we play that last hand and end up the session with the pretty big profit margin. All right, so we just finished at uh, 52 Social Poker. We played for four and a half hours now. Um, yeah, it was a good session. We, we, you know, this is a, it's been a while since we did the last vlog. I was like, whatever, um, let's, let's just get some footage for the, the people that on the internet that wanna watch and my friends, whoever wants to watch. And yeah, good session. Play four and a half in for a thousand, 100 because we bought 100 tip chips because you're not supposed to be tipping with the chips on in play So to help out the dealers I buy 100 tip chips and sell to the table if they need them But in for a thousand cash and then 100 tip chips we were out of the game completely for 2400 so that's a profit of a thousand three hundred dollars in four and a half hours So a pretty good hourly um, I'm excited to post this one uh, excited for everyone to be able to watch it and yeah until next time uh, See everyone